In the world of speedrunning, many people will claim they were the first to achieve a milestone or a world record, and the common rebuttal you might hear is, where's the video? In other words, extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. Claiming a world record is certainly extraordinary, right? Well, not always. Let me introduce you to possibly the most tied world record in speedrunning, Glass Joe. It's completely impossible to say who the first person to achieve a perfect time of 42.00 was. If you claim that you did it on the first day of release back in October of 1987, that's not totally an unreasonable claim. In fact, the true first record holder was probably one of the developers testing if their soon to be famous video game was working as intended. So why am I even bothering to cover Glass Joe? Well, I intend to cover the world record history of each fight in the game, perhaps with the exception of Mike Tyson, because some other guy got to that one first. However, unlike Mike Tyson, whose fight has seen little innovation regarding strategy, most of the other fights have seen a great deal of evolution. And yes, even Glass Joe has seen improvement. There isn't a whole lot that goes into this fight. Joe stands around, letting you do whatever you want for 40 seconds. He finally decides to get fancy by taunting you. You punch him a single time, and the fight is over. Some people might say, but I punched him when he charged at me, and he got up. The reason behind this is that because the punch you need to hit has only a 4 frame window. If you punch too early, Joe will block, and if you punch too late, Joe will still go down in a single hit, but he'll get right back up. Only if you land your punch within that 4 frame window will Joe be knocked out. This 4 frame window is divided into two sections, the two early frames and the two late frames. If you connect your punch into one of the two early frames, you will score the world record time of 42.00. But if you hit one of the two late frames, you end up getting a time of 42.25. A two frame window is pretty tricky to hit, considering this game runs at 60 frames per second. In order to consistently time your knockout punch every time, we need a technique called buffering. By buffering inputs, we can chain together every action Little Mac performs with zero delay in between. For instance, we can hold up and B before the fight begins and Mac will do a left face punch on the very first frame. Then, if we want to perform another buffered left face punch, we must release and repress B during the first face punch. Using this technique, we can chain together a series of inputs up to the 42 second mark in the fight, where Joe charges at us and we can knock him out. Buffering inputs to time a specific punch wasn't brought to the attention of Mike Tyson's punch out until Zalad1 made the daring crossover from Super Punch Out, where he was using the technique to speedrun that game. The specific buffer that Zalad came up with was this. Not exactly easy to remember, but it got the job done. Well, it got the job done half of the time, because it turns out, Glass Joe has one trick up his sleeve to prevent a guaranteed world record. When Joe backs up, he has a 50% chance to either beat two times, or a 50% chance to beat four times. The length of Zalad's buffer covered both variations, but not perfectly. When Joe beeped four times, the final punch would end up landing on the latter part of the window, and only getting a 42.25. Since everyone in the entire universe had already scored a perfect time of 42.00 on Glass Joe, Zalad's buffer was by far good enough for the MTPO community, as a quarter of a second discrepancy in full game runs was nothing to worry about. The fact that this buffer persisted as long as it did was incredible. The best players in the world would only get a world record half of the time on Glass Joe, not every time. It took over two years before someone finally had had enough and decided it was time to solve this problem once and for all. Recently I've been working on a way to figure out how to get a 42.00 every time in Glass Joe. Uh, actually, when I say recently, I mean when I woke up today, <laughs> I needed something to do because my controller's broken and I can't. On May 13th of 2015, Oijui found himself in a bit of a dilemma. He wanted to play Punch-Out, and yet his controller wasn't working well enough, and he couldn't trust it to pull off the crucial execution later in the game. So he decided to solve Glass Joe. What he found was that there was no way to construct a set of moves that you could perform the same way every time to get the time of 42.00. The problem with Zalad's buffer was only at the end section. If your punch for two beeps landed on the very first frame, then it was inevitable that continuing the buffer in any way from that point would cause the 4 beat variation to yield a 42.25. What Oijui came up with was genius, and he needed two things. 
The first of these things is that the right gut punch is slightly slower than the left gut punch. The amount it is slower by can vary from situation to situation. In the case of the Glass Joe fight, a landed right gut punch is 2 frames slower than a landed left gut punch, and a missed right gut punch is 1 frame slower than a missed left gut punch. The second thing Ouija Wii realised was much simpler. It was possible to react to whether Joe stopped after 2 beeps, or he continued on to do 4 beeps, and alter the buffer. Ouija Wii implemented a new buffer. 21 right dodges, followed by 3 left dodges. At the moment Mac performs his third left dodge, you have time to react to whether Joe did 2 beeps, or he is going to do 4 beeps. If he did 2 beeps, you would react to this and buffer a single right gut punch, which is relatively slow. The specific dodges we performed earlier causes this right gut punch to land on the very first frame of the 4 frame window. On the other hand, if he did 4 beeps, you would instead buffer 2 left gut punches. The first left gutter would replace the right gutter, which in this case, misses and speeds up the buffer by 1 frame. The solution was to use a dynamic buffer rather than a static one. By reacting to if Joe did 2 beeps, we could land a slow punch on the first possible frame. But if he did 4 beeps, we could switch out the slow punch for a faster one, saving 1 frame and landing our punch on the second frame rather than the third. The history of Glass Joe speedruns only had a few more years of life left. As speedrunning slowly became more mainstream, people looking for a very easy world record would submit their speedrun to the individual level leaderboard on speedrun.com. However, due to the sheer volume of people submitting their tied world record, moderators eventually decided to remove the Glass Joe leaderboard, since scoring the top time was rather trivial, and verifying these times was becoming extremely cumbersome. In today's Mike Tyson's Punch-Out speedruns, you won't see the exact buffer Ouija Wii created. Zalad1 found a different opening for the buffer, which can be started at around the 38 second mark on the clock. However, the true essence of Ouija Wii's buffer lives on. If Joe beeps twice, it's a single right gut punch, and if he beeps four times, it's two left gut punches. Glass Joe had been shattered, and speedrunners can now guarantee a perfect Glass Joe on all of their full game speedruns. I can't believe I just talked about the Glass Joe world record for seven minutes.